Okay, now, uh, example number two, okay, this should be fairly easy because um, these are um, already in slope-intercept form, okay, so they're going to be very easy to graph. Uh, I am going to graph it by hand. Yes, I realize that I can use my calculator, um, but might as well just get the practice in right here. Okay, so for the first equation right here, our y-intercept, you know, is the b, the constant that's on the end. So the y-intercept is positive 1. Our slope, there's no number in front of the x, but there is a negative. So that means our slope is negative 1. So that means we go down 1, right 1, or we can go up 1, left 1. Okay, whenever it's negative, it's just one of your directions need to be negative. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And this is our line right here. I can continue doing that. Uh, now, one note before you go in and fill the line. This is just greater than. It's not equal to. So this needs to be a dashed line. Okay, it is not a solid line. It is a dashed line. And what that means is that we cannot, yes, we use that line as a boundary, but we cannot include any points that are actually on that line as part of our solution. Okay? They would make it equal, but not greater than. Okay, we'll deal with the shading here in a minute. Let's go ahead and graph the other one. All right, it has a y-intercept of negative 1, and it has the same slope. So that means that it's parallel to the line that we just drew. Now, this is a system of inequalities, but if it were a system of equations, what would uh, our solution be right here? No solution. Because they're parallel lines, they're never going to intersect. The solution to a system of equations is where they intersect. These do not. However, this is a system of inequality, so our solution is a region. It's going to be something that we shade. Um, it's not an intersection here. So <clears throat> let's go in and shade. For the first one, it says y is greater than. Now, usually greater than means that you're going to shade above the line. That can sometimes be difficult for people to visualize. <clears throat> so I want to show you the way that I look at it. Now it is indeed above the line right here. So we're going to shade this region right here. Okay. Um, now sometimes <clears throat> if I'm kind of a little on the fence over whether it's above the line or below the line or well, which side really is above the line, um, I use a test point. <clears throat> Usually I use the point zero, zero. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, and I'm going to see if that inequality holds true. <clears throat> well, there is no negative 0. 0 is, is neither negative nor positive. So that's just 0 plus 1. So I get that 0 is greater than 1. That is not true. So that means that <clears throat> I'm going to shade the region that does not include 0, 0 for this purple <coughs> Um, let's look at the other one. The other one is also greater than, so that means we're going to shade above that line. So we're above this line, and then we keep going above this line. And notice that my yellow has turned, it's a little harder for you to see, but it's kind of turned green because there's an overlap there. Now, if you wanted to, you could also test 0, 0 in this one. And in this case, we get 0 is greater than negative 1. That is true. So for the blue line, I'm going to shade the region that does include 0, 0 in it. So that means I'm going to shade above that line. Now, the actual solution set here is the overlapping region. Okay, It is this triangular region right here. And really what that means, if it's never really been explained to you before,
before, that means any point in this region, it's not just limited to this, it continues going. But for the window we're looking at, this is what we're going to use to do. That means any point in this region satisfies both of those inequalities. So let's check a couple just to see. Um, let's check the point, how about we check 4, 0? And I like nice even numbers, I'm going to do 2, 2. Okay, so I'm going to plug those points, 2, 2, and 4, 0. I'm going to plug those x's and y's into both inequalities, and I'm going to confirm that they're both true. Okay, so uh, y is 2, x is 2. That says 2 is greater than negative 1. That is true. I got to plug it into the other equation as well. 2 is greater than negative 2 minus 1. Well, that's 2 is greater than negative 3, so that is true. <clears throat> that one works. Uh, let's test for 0. y is 0, x is 4, so 0 is greater than negative 3. That's true. Uh, y is 0, x is negative 4, 0 is greater than negative 5. That is also true. So that's what it really means to be a solution to a system of equality, uh, inequalities. Any point in this region, I could have you know, tested this point, I could have tested this point up here in the corner, I could have tested a point way up here. Any point satisfies both inequalities at the same time. Okay? Both of them work. Okay, so let's look at number 11. Okay? Let's look at one where it's not in slope-intercept form, and this is not a system of inequalities, this is a system of equations, so we're not going to end up having a shade here, um, we're looking for an intersection for these, um, but before we can do that, before we can graph these, we've got to be able to solve for y. Even if we were going to plug it into our calculator to graph, we have to be able to solve for y. Alright, so I'm going to move the first one over so I've got room to move things. Uh, i got to move the x over first. So I subtract 4x from both sides. Well, there's nothing to combine it with, so it just moves to the right side with its negative sign. That's negative 4x plus 6. And then I've got to get y by itself, so I have to divide everything by negative 3. Negative 4 divided by negative 3, that does not simplify, but you've got a negative divided by a negative, so that's a positive. And 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. Might as well go ahead and graph that while we're at it. We have a y-intercept of negative 2, and we have a slope of 4 over 3. So that means we go up 4 units, and we go over 3 units. Um, there's not really room on here to do that more than one time. And remember, you really only have to have two points to draw a line. So here is the line for that first one. Solve the second one. We have x minus 3y is equal to negative 3. We've got to move the x by subtraction. Again, there's nothing to combine it with, so it just hangs out over there with the negative. And then divide everything by negative 3. So y is equal to x doesn't have a coefficient, so it's understood to be 1. It's negative 1, so we've got a negative divided by a positive that gives us, excuse me, a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive. So it's positive one third x. And negative three divided by negative three, it doesn't, you're probably used to saying that that cancels, um, but canceling kind of gives the idea that that should be zero. Okay, we have a y-intercept of positive 1, and it may not look like these are really going to intersect because they both have positive slopes, but indeed they do because a slope of 1 third means we go up 1, right 3. Well, looky there, we've already intersected with the other line.
and that occurs at the point 3, 2. So that is our solution. The point 3, 2 is the solution. Now what does that mean? That means that when x is 3 and y is 2, both of these equations are true. The first one's going to equal 6 and the second one's going to equal negative 3. So that's a really easy way, guys, that you can check these. All you have to do is plug in 3 for x and 2 for y and make sure that it works. So in the first one, 4 times 3, let me write it out. 4 times 3 minus 3 times 2. Question is, does that equal 6? 12 minus 6? Yeah, that equals 6. If we plug it into the other one, 3 minus 3 times 2, does that equal negative 3? 3 minus 6, yeah, that equals negative 3. So that is the correct answer. 3, 2 is the solution to the system of equations. And we did it by graph. All right, so I want you to practice here with the... Um,